everybody, Silverbird Actual here. Uh, today we're just doing a first impressions flight in the Just Flight Fokker 27. And today we're just having a look at uh, just, just, the dual first impressions. It's a first impressions both on the Fokker 27, which I've just got my hands on, and uh, Inverness Airport by um, <coughs> Sim 720. It's going to. I'm going to do a few flights like this where I don't do much prep and we just fly the aeroplane and see what we think of the aeroplane when we fly it because I know a lot of you guys uh, don't spend your entire lives uh, flight planning okay so we just started up engines so I think we'll go for runway 36 looks shortish also you can see what we haven't done a proper fuel plan but I think we'll probably go for that runway over there which I think is it says it on the signpost 0636. So I'm just going to go to the virtual cockpit. So first and uh, first glance, a very very nice VC on the aircraft. Um, inverter can come on, and that's switched over to battery. We'll just switch some further lights on. Peter heaters on. Panel lights not required. Uh, actually, we'll take loads per side. Um, okay. So we're not on the VATSIM net, so we don't have to care about that. What we do care about, however, is the navigational radios. So it's 115.1, and we've come up on our first issue. Oh no, 115.1. That's now the active side. Um, Alright, that's, that's nav audio selector, not the active... Not which, not which, which size active. So the, yeah, that's about right. Now the outbound course is one to one if memory serves. Yeah, it is. Actually, it's not programmed on this. Actually, we'll just scroll the heading select around. Uh, so my, my first kind of issue with this aircraft, if I may have one, uh, is that it um, you can't shrink that or make that disappear. So you do, you're constantly doing this sort of thing to look behind the uh, thing. I'm just going to check the navigation log. Yeah, it was one two five, which is about that. So we'll just book that in as a heading select bug, and that's tracking outbound, of course, from the VOR. Now. Here's our first problem. I'm just going to zoom to the external view and just use a bit of power and get ourselves around the turn. That's looking a bit. Okay, we're on the grass a little bit, but still. Okay, we didn't just go through the terminal. But overall, the external model looks quite nice, in my. Uh, again, ever so humble opinion. Obviously, the ground power is automatically connected. Uh, but I'm not too concerned about my poor turn off stand there. Okay, this thing's grand maneuverability is not impressive. Um, but yes, but uh, as for the airport scenery, I've got to say it looks very, very nice. And we've got to. I never doubted that, that Sim 720 would turn out something this good, but yeah, it's quite refreshing to have a, a very, very nice scenery at this level. Okay, ignore me not being able to taxi this thing. As you know, um, I'm doing the 24-hour um, <clears throat> live stream on Monday. Monday coming. Um, that's going to be, and this is going to be one of the legs, well, the reverse of this anyway, going from Inverness to Stornoway. But when we're doing Stornoway to Inverness. Um, but yeah, it's a very hard aircraft to taxi this. When you start turning it, it doesn't stop. Okay, we're not we're not going to backtrack for the departure now. Uh, I'm going to rotate it about 110. See, it's very very difficult to taxi. I really am reiterating that. Uh, and I know the taxiways aren't massively wide here, but still. That's the touchdown zone, quite early on in the runway. So that gives an idea of how short this runway actually is. Um, yeah, the Fokker 27 is actually quite an old aircraft now. 
We can go all the way to the end, should we? Yeah, let's go to the end. I think that's going to be the easiest way to do this. So... Yeah, it's uh, the virtual cockpit. I, my, it's kind of like a little bit of a bugbear. With the older aircraft, a lot of these parts... Okay, the yokes look a bit worn, but only through the textures. But it's this aircraft is about 50 or so years old. So it's, you know, it's an absolute OAP of, of aviation. And it... Uh, you know, things like the throttle levers look absolutely brand new and it just doesn't feel right if you know what I mean true if you want to, to pretend you're flying in the 1950s it's absolutely brilliant but you can't really do that in FSX and it just doesn't that's, you know, that's my only kind of bugbear with this aircraft is the difficulty with which you can oh, the difficulty with taxiing which I don't know if that's the way it's the aircraft's been designed or uh, <clears throat> whether it's just uh, you know the um, actual way it's been mo uh, modelled I should say uh, I'm not going to use the autopilot on this flight because of the, uh, last and I've got, I've got a few aircraft which use this sort of autopilot entering the runway clear on the approach um, and I, none of them I particularly like, like the autopilots, I have to say, because they're the just the horrible. I mean, I could fly the aircraft in heading select mode, I suppose. Okay, so this is runway 36, so we can scroll the heading bug. Ah! Alright, let's just stop. And we can just do that with the VOR. Thing. Okay, so heading select bug is to north. Flaps have already been set for departure. Okay, we'll just set full power. 5,000 revs, brakes released. Again, this might not be the way to fly this aircraft, but it's very much just a first impressions. What I think of the aircraft and will I use it again. Um, okay, so I'll rotate at 120 knots. Seems a little bit excessively fast, but easing itself into the air. Positive right gear on its way up. Okay, we'll climb for about two or three miles just to get some altitude. Again, climb's not particularly impressive, but yeah, average for aircraft of its time. Let's see if we can make this sort of pilot work. So if I set that, so that's heading mode, and no, not altitude held mode, just flat director on, heading mode on, so what we'll do is we'll just do a three, well, about a 270, whoa, turn to the right, 270 turn to the right, um, Pull a little bit of power off now. Just pitch and hold. Which will give us a little bit of altitude before we fly the airfield again. I believe the area I'm in now is at just, just FTX Global. But it won't be able to do a turn around and overfly the air, uh, airfield. The green line is Nav 1, I believe. Uh, on the left hand radio navigation gauge. Okay, let's just not roll that steeply. Okay, so there we go, we made it. Now we're going to just overfly the aerodrome. So you can see it's, uh, obviously I'm using Rex 4 for the sea textures, but the airfield textures do look very, very nice indeed, I've got to say. Stone away, um, we'll just do a left rudder turn. So we're to the right of track currently. So we'll just fly that way to intercept. Um, just to see if we can get it trimmed out. There we go. A little bit speedy Gonzalez there, so I'll just let it pull up a little bit. Maybe a quarter trim. 
Okay, so... Flight director's on. Okay, that memory serves, it goes to nav mode. And then... Power on. Oh, and then it's an engage. Yeah, there we go. I think the Hercules autopilot's quite similar to that in the Captain Sim Her uh, Hercules model. Um, if I then go to heading select, and I go to scroll my uh, heading bug around to straight ahead. Oh, it's autopilot master switch. Master switch is on. There we go. So the autopilot is switched on now. But is it doing anything? Uh, if I swing that to nav. Nav mode. Um, or to, let's just fly ourselves around in heading mode. Will that do anything? Okay, we'll come back to the autopilot in a later video. And just fly by hand now. So we need to do a little bit of an intercept from the... Uh, Maybe if just fly this sort of a heading. Um, yeah, it's climbing fairly quickly. We're ten thousand now, or four five thousand. Huh? Ah, uh, right. I get it now. I, d I didn't understand the autopilot on this thing initially. Are the uh, gauges? A little bit of turbulence there. Again, it's uh, the aircraft handling things quite well. Um, <clears throat> some red lights over here indicate that the aircraft ain't happy with something. That's the fuel pumps. Just switch those on. I don't know if they're meant to be on. I'm just going to leave them on. Right, we'll just take off both tanks' fuel. Both tanks are still full. That's the Oh! So I think that's the engine coolant for full power. I'll just leave that on. It's going through its supply quite quickly, I've got to admit. Uh, I think water methanol, if memory serves, is was used in World War Two to give our aircraft extra bits of power, as in one required. Um, could be wrong there. And again, the lights up here. Um, the fact that they don't stand out particularly well. Uh, I don't know again if that's just a part, part of the design of them. Uh, that, that like that, and then a pool illuminated area. Because I've uh, been, f have had a cheeky uh, little flight around in this with this aircraft before, and I must admit I didn't say it. Right, so that's not working. Which is I can deal with that. So we'll just. Flick back over. So yeah, it is taking. Uh, we're on nav one there. The aircraft does look uh, fairly pretty in there. I don't know if this is a placebo effect, but since I've transitioned to FSX Steam Edition, uh, the air it does. The, I don't know if it's just placebo or what, but it the. the the aircraft does seem to be flying a lot, lot smoother than it was. Um, you know, the the whole same's jumped from pushing 15 on a, on a good day to 19 pretty much everywhere. Ooh, we can open. Right, let's close that before the passengers get fright. Um, flight director. Right, 
So let's try the autopilot out again. Autopilot's engaged. Alright, so if I go for beam mode and go for autopilot beam to nav and then beam mode. So does that mean the aircraft's now going to follow the... Uh, it's doing turns. <laughs> if that means anything to anyone. And we're flying it in altitude hold mode now. Just pulling back the power. I'm sorry to anybody who's... Apparently that's not meant to be left on. Who does actually know how to fire this aircraft. But um, this is very much me um, kind of doing a live commentary on how I learned to fly aeroplanes. So we've flown 20 or so miles, it's 150 clicks, which is about 100 or so miles trip distance. So once we get to about the 40 mile mark, we'll transition from the uh, Stornoway VOR to the Inverness VOR from 11.501.51 to uh, 109.2. Big differences. Um, but yeah, so I'm just flip the manual from just flight. Um, but yeah, what should I do? I just stick you guys on a. Uh, yeah. It's as I say, externally, it's a very, very pretty aircraft. Oh, I think it is anyway. Uh, but yeah, so the Fokker 27 was that was obviously one of the first. Well, well. well I think it was actually initially, if memory serves correctly, uh, designed as a replacement for the Douglas DC-3. One of many aircraft designed to replace the DC-3, which never really happened, due to the DC-3 just being as venerable as it is. So, yeah, um... So, yeah, obviously, saw production in the 1950s, as I was right, DC-3 replacement. It's short haul, passenger and cargo. Uh... Um, obviously it's a turboprop, uh, using the Rolls-Royce Dart engine. We are flying the... Uh, yeah, we're flying the 200 series, which Apache crashed on approach to Castle Donington, which I believe is East Midlands Airport now, in 1987, the aircraft we're flying now. Um, Right. Actually, well, there's quite a few aircraft. I haven't looked at a few of them yet. Um, obviously, it comes up with quite a few variants of everything from East West Airways, which is an Australian airline, to DLT, which are uh, German. I think they're the predecessor to Air Berlin. Uh, yeah, as well as obviously BM, uh, well, BM at the time, then BMI, now British Airways. Um, Alright, so there are quite a few uh, animations. I just haven't managed to make any of them work yet. Okay. Yeah, obviously the GPU works. Uh, So yeah, the crew call button, um, crew call seems to be the method for calling any, um, uh, you know, any, like, all the ground equipment, which we'll check that, we'll check that out when we get to, um, Inverness. So, um, actually we're not c close enough yet, I'm, I'm not sure how long the, re how big the range is on the Inverness, uh, VOR. Yeah, the one point I do have with this aircraft is Just Flight was legendary for having all the 2D pop-ups, whereas this one has this, and then that's it, a night point tool, which if you want to move around the cabin and make it look like you're using um, a slightly lumpier version of Easy Dock, brilliant, but, you know, or if you want to be a real shorty flying the aeroplane, or somebody roughly my height. 
which is uh, reason to be tall. But yeah, so it's uh, the manual is again is very very good. Uh, so the aircraft, um, uh, yeah, it does. Well, that's impressive. It has a. Um, yeah, the aircraft uh, is a bit like Concorde and uses fuel to trim itself out. Uh, so yeah, 40 miles, that's c close enough for me. We'll see if we can flick over. Nah, we can't see anything. Um, Alright, I'm just going to... Uh, Cut the video here for two seconds to check something. So yeah, I've noted the frequency down uh, incorrectly, which is why we had we had the big struggle to, to change frequency. There we go. So we'll just fly the aircraft into nav mode now. So uh, yeah. The aircraft's now going to do a bit of a turn, but actually we, we can pretty much fly visually from here. Uh, we'll be flying obviously manual landing into Inverness, but yeah, as I say, the um, aircraft, obviously we've lost a lot of the uh, ground clutter due to the altitude, but um, yeah, the aircraft seems to be doing very, very well. It, it seems that that button there, I'm not going to touch it now, that should be in... Alright, all right, so you can't actually have it in... Oh, mode. That button there on the ground will call the stairs. There we go, it even annotates itself for that. Alright, so yeah, as I said, the water methanol system allows for maximum engine power to be used in hot and high conditions without uh, overheating the engines. Uh, and yeah, it even said that, the, uh, as we noticed, that the tanks empty themselves very quickly. So to use it sparingly. And obviously the, the window we managed to open, um, they, man they managed to open it on the, uh, it's an animation that you'll see outside as well. I'm not going to do that now though, just because I'm not that kind of a guy. Um, but yeah. Okay, so we can, we're now 26 miles to the VOR. So if I just adjust the course slightly, which would then cause the air, oh, right, I get it now. <laughs> 25 miles to go, and we're at nine, nine or so thousand. So just pull a little bit of power off. Um, props are dropping perfectly in sync. That's not a, that did, never happens in the real world, um, apparently. Anyway, uh, so I just got the charts up for Inverness. I could go off Papa Echo. Sorry, it's, I can't, again, I can't show these on YouTube because I'm not sure on the copyright, and I'd rather just tell you to go and look up the uh, VOR approach charts for Inverness than uh, end up having to uh, get in trouble over it. So, yeah, the inbound course we want is 054, so if I can... Actually, we'll just fly in visually and uh, establish visually over the airfield, then do a visual joint of land. So, if I now just pull a lot of power off, and then give... the pitch down in part. Which is going to be quite a steep descent actually. We're going to go for about 5 degrees. So, so it's left click lowers the nose, right click raises the nose, which is good. Um, and the aircraft is still dropping very, very, very slowly. Slowly enough, but still, very slowly. Um,
Hmm. If I just put all the way to idle. Oh, I command it through that. Would that work? Yep, that works. Yeah, hit a few bumps. That's the airfield there. So we'll just do a visual join to land. Um, I'll just dis actually I'll just disconnect now that we've got it descending itself. So the turtle final wants to be on a heading of about 054. Cabin crew, please take your seats. I think we simulated this as being a postal flight, but uh, yeah, a lot. There's only uh, very few of these Fokker uh, F-27 aircraft survive, but or comparatively, but a lot of them are still flying yeah, in other parts of the world, such as Africa. I've worked out what I did. I told it to hold alt altitude. I had alt hold engaged, and it won't override that. It'll override everything else, but not, not alt hold. Uh, anyway, we used in Africa to do uh, various t sorts of flying out there, which I just think is a real testament to the design of these, that they're still going now. I mean, um, just look, glancing at the manual of the aircraft that are simulated, most of the, them have, are either preserved in various locations or have, or have gone due to crashes. Two or three, uh, you know, some... Uh, some of them have been broken up. Some of them have, uh, yeah. Oh, that was a, um, yeah, the east. Whoa, that's a bit of a steep descent. But actually, it's not bad because we can take a bit of energy with this aircraft. Yes, some of them were have been most of them have been written off in crashes, which. Oh, I'm not going to uh, libel my uh, open myself up to uh, all the issues I, I could open myself up to with if I discussed that. Okay, we'll, we'll not forget the lights this time, so landing lights on, taxi lights, because we're going to pretend we've cleared now, flights, wipers, yep, they work, uh, beacon light, oh, should have been on, no, no. strobe, anti-collisions, so there we go, we're now properly illuminated, coming in to land, uh, I've got the volumetric light effect, I think, which is the same as it is on the Canberra with this aircraft, a little bit of screen tearing there, um, alright, so, 180 knots, first lump of flap, gear coming down, because we are quite close in, so we just want a bit more drag. Again, the animation's exquisite there. <clears throat> so once we use the marshal to bring us on to stand, uh, we'll use all of the, we'll do the rest of the, uh, the, the, the uh, turnaround using the uh, built-in functions. Full flap now, just a little bit of power. Holding 130 knots for the time being, and then descent. Um, looking to, to the south there. Okay, you usually can. I am descending into the right place, aren't I? Yes, I am, that's in nice. But anyway, down there you can see a valley, just over there. And that's actually the Great Glen of Scotland. And that, uh, we, if we flew down that valley, which I've done in the past, takes you all the way to pretty much Glasgow. Um, so it's that might be the next leg like, of uh, this trip if I decide I like the Fokker. Uh, so how long have I been longing to say that? Seeing if I like the little Fokker. Uh, sorry. Once you, d you do it once you can't get away from it. Uh, yeah, obviously the nose wheel's doing deflects in the air, which again I don't know how realistic that one is. The, the aircraft don't I don't actually think has thrust reversers or any a proper beta range so I think the idea is just to close the throttle and stand on the brake that's what I've been led to understand uh, And before I was trying to op open and close the main door, but I couldn't due to the fact that the uh, main door is actually um, a door within the, the the cargo door, which isn't actually fitted to this aircraft. Actually, that was one of these aircraft. I just remembered a while ago I had a bit of an accident because the prop on the left-hand engine, so that one there, actually came off the aircraft and sliced through the fuselage. 
of the aircraft, which I just think is absolutely crazy that that kind of a thing happened. Pretty sure Scotland does not look like this, but I'm um, uh, I'll leave it uh, open to the people who have actually flown into Inverness in the real world. Also, next week, uh, July the sixth, sorry, July the second to the eighth, I'm going to be away, but, it's, but I'm going to try and vlog uh, most of that trip. I'll try and take my laptop with me, and if I can get on the internet, I will be uploading videos. Uh, well, not flights and videos, or not gaming videos, but uh, some uh, <clears throat> just some videos of uh, my life. Because apparently, I'm getting a birthday present when I'm over there. Better not be a shawl the sheep spoon again. Because that was what I got for Christmas. Shh, don't tell my mother I said that. Uh, but yes, yeah, so it's obviously the aircraft, very FPS friendly. And then you just look at the airport and the lags just hit you like a ton of bricks. Um, wow, I'm actually getting screen towering. Never had that with FSX before. Have we got a crosswind? That's, the aircraft feels like it's flying in a crosswind. Okay, we'll go back to the internal view. And that's one screen like this should be off. I think we'll just do what we do in um, most light aircraft. Well, the light lighter aircraft, which we fly. Let's just close the throttle and dive. Dive, dive, dive. So obviously we do appear reasonably high on the landing, but that's no big deal because we're flying the little flocker. Sorry, I uh, had to. And uh, it's very, very good fun to fly. And yeah, it's dropping, drops down very, very nicely. Okay, so we're dropping a little bit steeper than three and a half degrees, but that's actually fine because we're lined up. Is that an aircraft anyway? Now, as I say, we're, as I mentioned, we're high, but we're flying kind of a um, light aircraft approach where most of the people I know who fly light aircraft will just get it to this position and just cut the throttle and uh, just descend as and when okay so we'll just there we go ease it on and we're down props into ground arcs Brakes coming on, we can even lift some flap up because that just makes the whole braking thing easier. Um, there we go, flapless. So I think we'll just do a turn here. Um, oh, sure, because I forgot about the ground turning arc of this thing. That's actually quite good this time around. Um, but I say I'm quite happy with that one. I managed to get good at the lineups recently, so uh, landing lights off. Nav, nav lights can stay on. Uh, Fasten seatbelt signs. This should have been on. <laughs> uh, strobe light off. We're not on the grass again, are we? No, we're not. Yeah, it's, overall, I think that's a very good aircraft. The, uh, well, the aircraft is a very, very good fun to fly. Just get some. Uh, we'll take gate number three. No, that's not a request to follow me there. Because um, I think I know where we're going. And upon arrival, we'll do the. Uh, we use uh, uh, the built in uh, equipment to uh, offload our aircraft. Hopefully, the. Uh, Hopefully, um, <coughs> GSX in general doesn't actually know where any of the doors are on this aircraft. We won't have to reset the position, but we, m we might have to. So, that's the VOR over there, I think. I think it is anyway. Is it over there? Yeah, I actually think it's over that way. But, uh, yeah, so... Uh, I know it's behind us, apparently. Got it the point. But the... Um, just open the window to get some fresh air into the uh, cockpit of the aircraft. Health and safety would actually hang you for this, this I think, because it's uh, very much a noise hazard. But yeah, it's as you can see, we can uh, see that the window is actually open even from the external view, which is, I think is very, very good uh, modelling on the part of the designers at Just Flight. I've got to say that overall, um, 
I only bug bears with the aircraft. Or that he doesn't that it looks brand new in some areas, which is that's again just kind of a personal bugbear of mine. Uh no, it's got the steps built coming for us anyway. Has GSX. <clears throat> no, I think overall fairly good flight. I actually know a few guys who've flown in these, like as passengers, and they're saying yeah, they're the, lo the loudest aircraft ever. Um, but it's, yeah, it was. I think this was. This is one of the uh, iconic aircraft of the century, definitely. We're back at Sim 720s uh, Inverness. Been here once or twice. Um, I think the aircraft just to our right there is actually registered G Sim 720. Um, I wonder. And the EasyJet's actually one of the first A320s they bought. But I love the absolutely OCD level of modelling the um, Sim 720 go to. So for example, if you look at that A320, the um, hydraulics are drooped. And that's because the aircraft is powered down, as you know, as we know with the A320. When you um, bring it into a, uh, once you shut the end, once you shut the engines down, the hydraulics droop because it's you know, fly by wire. Um, but yeah, definitely 110% one of my favourite aircraft. Uh, this, uh, actually, this is even the. I'd say the Fokker is. I don't think it was ever marketed as being a Fokker 27 with PMDG standard. But it's. You know, it is a lot nicer. Okay, so we've rolled a bit past the, the blocks. So what we'll do is we'll then jump inside, shut that just because that was getting in the way now, and then switch that over to external power, which is just a bit, which means the GPU should appear there once we shut the engines down. So that's the fuel supply cut, and that's the feather. So that I think is the engines shutting down, because I believe that's how we shut engines down in this aircraft. But they obviously spin at quite a high RPM, so that's why they're going to take a little while. Hope, well, hopefully they are. All right, that wasn't very good parking. Yes, yeah, as if you can park one of these better on your first flight. Um, it also would help if there was uh, some taxi lines drawn on the uh, airport. I don't know if the real airport has those, but yeah, that's quite accurate. And then we can go Control F12. Actually, let's not do it through GSX. I can't be bothered to do it through GSX. Control Shift F1. And uh, now what we can do is not use the GSX ground handling. Shift E2. There we go. So the doors do work on this aircraft. And then if we push the crew call bell, does that make this thing, the ground things appear outside? Oh, that's quite nice actually. It's I've got to say. I've seen better, but I've also seen a heck of a lot worse. Um, obviously, and it's also period ground handling as well. So it, it's, I suppose, the Fokker, 50, the Fokker 28, sorry, by Just Fly. Again, my final word on it. Actually, this thing's on more motion. Which is, yeah, the back um, car corridor. Final word on this aircraft. Overall, very good, but a very good buy. I'm not exactly sure how much I paid for it. I'll add that in the annotations. Um, but yeah, overall, very good. Only kind of little critique is it looks too new, but apart from that, overall, I'd rate it. If I was to rate, um, you know, on a scale of one to ten, with PMDG level being ten, uh, I'd, I'd rate this at a, at a first glance, obviously, at about a six or a seven, which isn't a bad mark for me because. PMDG put a bloody large amount of effort into theirs, and again, you know, yeah, yeah. the only issues I have, as I said, are the fact that it doesn't look particularly nice, but I, but I think, uh, 
you know, with a few bit, with a little bit more flying done, I think I'll, yeah, I think this aircraft is going to be coming out of the hangar with me a heck of a lot more in the future. So, uh, on that, on that bombshell. Oops, sorry, wrong TV program. Uh, on that note, thanks for watching. Bye.